Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Zor Education. Um, we continue talking about properties of derivatives as part of the advanced mathematics course for uh, teenagers presented on Unizor.com. Um, if you watch this lecture from this website, you will have uh, the notes for the lectures, which are very detailed, and I do suggest you to do it. Um, and also, maybe after the lecture is finished, it would be a good practice to just go through the text of these notes. Uh, they basically are like a textbook, and read it again. So it's it's better inculcated in your minds. All right. So today we will talk about the property uh, about how to derive how to to to, to take derivative uh, of the function which is expressed as one over uh, another function. Now, um, let's do exactly the same as uh, the prescription for taking a derivative actually asks for. So this uh, uh, as a function which is equal to this one, then my derivative is actually the um, limit of the ratio of increment of the function divided by increment of the argument. So, what is uh, increment of the function? Well, that's a um, function at value x plus delta x, which is this, minus function value at value x, right? All right, so Let's use the common denominator. Now, obviously, I assume that f at x is not equal to 0 wherever all these calculations are made. Um, so, in the denominator, I will have their product. And in the numerator, I will have this. Right? So it's f at x divided the product minus f at x plus delta x divided the product, right? Which, by the way, if you take a look at the numerator, it's minus delta f at x, right? f at x is this minus this, so this is minus delta f at x. Now, Whenever I am making this ratio, increment of the function divided by increment of the um, argument, and take a limit of this as increment of the argument goes to zero, I will have, well, let me consider this separately from from this. So that would be a limit of minus 1 divided by f at x plus delta x times f at x times limit of delta f at x divided by delta x. So now, you see how easy it is. Because this piece is basically considering f at x is a continuous function. Um, the uh, limit of this is just minus 1 over f at x squared. Right? Because this goes to f at x, and this f at x basically is independent of delta x, so it's like a constant goes out. So that's what we have as the first multiplier. And the second multiplier is obviously derivative of the function f at x. So this is a derivative of. 1 over f at x. So 1 over f at x derivative is derivative of the f at x, 
with a minus sign and divided by square of the function. Now we will use this formula to derive a few limits. My first one is second. Okay, now this is basically by definition it's 1 over cosine of x, right? So we have exactly the situation um, prescribed by the theory, which is actually is minus cosine square of x, right? Times derivative of the cosine, which is minus sine, so this would be plus, and then sine of x. So that's the derivative of the second. I'll use this to to save some space on the board. Okay, my next example is tangent. D tangent of x by dx. Well, Tangent is, by definition, sine over cosine, right? So it's d by dx sine x times 1 over cosine x, right? So consider this as a product. So it's the first function, sine x times derivative of the second one, which we have just did a second ago, right? That was sine x over cosine square x plus the second one times derivative of the first one, which is equal to, this is 1, and this is sine square over cosine square, which is tan tangent squared. So it's 1 plus tangent square of x. So here I have used two different rules. One is the product, and another is um, the inverse. Next. Okay, e to the power of minus x. Again, we know what's the uh, derivative of the e to the power of x, which is e to the power of x. But we never actually did e to the power of minus x separately. But let's just recall that e to the power of minus x is 1 over e to the power of x, right? Which basically we can use this rule with f of x is equal to e of x, so it's e to the power of x, I mean, so it's e to the power of x square minus sine and the product And the, uh, and the uh, derivative of the e to the power of x, which is e to the power of x, which obviously is minus 1 over e to the power of x, right? Because we can reduce by e to the power of x, which is minus e to the power minus x. Now, what's interesting is and the situation actually is very similar to the previous lecture when I was deriving the derivative of sine of 2x. I can use actually a composition function here. One, comp one function is minus x and another is e to the power of x. Now the composition of these two functions 
actually also can be um, can be used to to take a derivative and there are, and there are certain rules which I will explain in the next lecture and according to those rules I will have to have exactly the same result but we will see now the final formula which I would like to derive is which I actually used um, already once I mean I didn't use it I actually derived it for a specific case of tangent right so tangent was sine over cosine but now I would like to have a general rule of this how to take the derivative of this um, ratio of two functions well again we do exactly the same as I did with the tangent it's f at x times 1 over g of x equals first times the, pro the, the, the derivative of the second right and here I will have derivative of g of x right according to this rule plus the second times the derivative of the first one well obviously it would be much easier if we will um, use the common denominator g of x square and I will have first I will get this one because it's positive right I multiply by g of x uh, numerator and denominator to get g of x square so that's what I will have in the numerator and here minus f at x g plus g derivatives all right so in some way it resembles the product actually except there is a in the product of f times g uh, derivative I will have uh, derivative times the second one plus the second uh, second one derivative to the first one uh, now I have a minus now I have a minus because uh, functions are not symmetrical because one is numerator and another is denominator and then I have a remnants from this uh, denominator also in the derivative as well so it's a little bit more complicated formula than for the product for the product let me just remind it's this one So it's first time derivative of the second and the second time derivative of the first and here we have you know in some way similar but with a minus sign and also there is a, a denominator square all right so these are a few examples to basically demonstrate how we can use um, the rules to to take a derivative from one over the function I do suggest you to go to unisor.com and take a look at the notes for this lecture. Um, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.